because um, um, I want to explain who and why I think about because I mention these were these names from time to time. So uh, I just want to make it clear what I think about these people and uh, why I'm mentioning their names. So I'm trying to make some kind of a, a superhero cape slash poncho slash cardigan. It's gonna be just one one uh, piece. Hmm? It's gonna go like this. Not sure about the buttons here, but there should be something, some kind of belt to tie it all together. So that's gonna go fall down up to here, I suppose. Yeah. What I want to talk about today is the gurus, fake gurus or real gurus. I don't know who is fake, who is real. I think it all matters. It depends on what you feel is fake or real. Um, so I'm not gonna give you any facts, I'm not gonna give you any background stories or evidence, some kind of uh, testimonials of people. What I wanna do is I just wanna... Put this yarn back on the main needle! <laughs> See? Very hard to talk and do this. Alright. So what I want to do is I'm just going to give you my personal opinion, um, but I'm not going to um, I'm going to base that opinion only on what I know and what I've experienced and I also want to um, I, I don't want to talk about the people that I don't know and that I have just seen one video of or heard something about them and then oh okay so that must be it Um, let me start a little bit, sort of, chronologically. Um, and I want to say that I'm not going to talk about the Western gurus like Erkat Tolle, Tolle or um, uh, Bentinho Massaro, Esther Hicks, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, or whoever is in that gameplay, Bob Proctor. I, 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 
I don't want to talk about that. I just want to talk about the Indian gurus. Uh, so the gurus that came from India, but there will be one who is an exception. But he's kind of Indian. In a way, well, West Indian. You, you'll understand. So, uh... Uh, the first guru that um, I have come across uh, was Sai Baba. And uh, I read a lot of Sai Baba's books some 20 years ago, and I liked I liked the guy a lot. Okay. So, the first guru I would like to talk about is Sai Baba. And um, I came across Sai Baba, of course not in person, <laughs> some 20 years ago, while he was still alive. And um, I read a lot of his books, I liked his teaching. And I kind of wanted to go to, you see now I forgot the place where uh, he was, somewhere in central India. Because some of the people I knew, some of my friends actually went there. And uh, yeah, seemed fine. Um, but the more I learned about the Hindu culture, the Vedic philosophy, the more I realized that whatever Sai Baba was saying actually doesn't come from him. It's just a, a, a I will call it rehash, remix, or um, some kind of... You know, of, of the old tradition, there, there was nothing really new in whatever he was teaching or telling at his satsang. Um, so, after that, um, I think there was um, uh, Paramahamsa Yogananda, and um, he is kind of well established. Um, his, um, I kind of felt a good connection to him. Of course, he's not alive anymore, like Sai Baba, uh, but uh, he has uh, left a lot of big legacy, especially in the States, especially in the Western world. Um, and he's sort of the, the, the modern father of self-realization, which I will come to that later. So um, after Yogananda, and uh, his book, uh, the autobiography of a yogi, is excellent, and I think anybody alive should read it. Doesn't matter if you are in the in the culture or not, whatever. Even if you're not interested in this, just to get an idea of what it is, so that you can actually um, even you know give counter arguments and uh, give some evidence of why you feel that or don't feel that this is uh, true. Um, after uh, Yogananda, I think I think I would say uh, Osho. Osho was um, uh, was or is my Reiki master's guru, so to speak. So she is uh, into Osho and uh, she kind of... Um, I, I had heard of Osho, of course, before, but uh, she was kind of um, a trigger of why I trusted that Osho would be an interesting guru to look into, so to speak. And then when I was in India, I was uh, lucky to to have come across 
the Osho uh, Meditation Center and uh, they um, I went uh, there to, to, to learn the Osho Meditation and uh, I actually got the Osho uh, name and initiation so um, uh, I am capable <laughs> and sort of certified if you can say so to teach Osho's meditations I think they are wonderful uh, Osho as a character is very contradictory uh, a little bit like Sai Baba but not uh, to, to much greater extent Sai Baba just uh, towards the end of his life because of his collaborators um, there was some shady business there Osho's, Osho's uh, dynamic meditations are, are an excellent tool of uh, how to calm your mind and uh, how to actually s start this journey towards the meditation. They are not be all and all and I think that they are, they are a great introductory level um, um, you can say methodology or technique um, or strategy of how to how to actually uh, uh, start this uh, inward inward journey, and um, of course Osho is, uh, is has a lot of um, scandals around his name, but you will see that. Uh, most most other gurus can be interpreted as at least notorious at least um. Next, next guru that uh, I know a lot about is uh, yes, it would be uh, Paramahamsa Nityananda. Now, I, I think that Paramahamsa Nityananda is not a good name for him. Um, uh, there are people who call him something else, but I don't want to get into this. Uh, um, I, I don't know even how to call it because uh, there are some serious, serious uh, allegations against this guy and um, I have followed him for maybe um, a year or so, two years maybe, but I have noticed something that I it just didn't, didn't sound right to me my my personal um, experience uh, the thing is that he would always address his uh, we can call them followers or devotees or whatever you want the people that that sort of revered him the people that came to his ashram um, he always talked as if they have just come there as if they had just arrived and they have no idea about spirituality and they have no idea about what are good habits what are bad habits he i was thinking wait a minute if i'm sitting here at home and i'm thinking that i'm kind of the advanced level the people in the ashram must be 
at least 10 times more advanced than me and he is talking to them as if they're 10 times lower than me so I, I, I and I watched his old videos like from 2006 and they were seven or eight something they were excellent and of course it's again the rehash of or show of Sai Baba so whatever the Sai Baba was saying whatever I, I read in Osho's books I heard that already in Nityananda so it seemed like it was a confirmation of whatever I already not knew but there wasn't much new that he uncovered the only thing that uh, Nityananda was um, I saw him as a resourceful uh, 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 person or let's say institution is that on his website there are so many kriyas but then again you shouldn't actually uncover kriyas uh, you know for everybody without any prior um, training and discipline and making sure that this person is not going to abuse the Kriya uh, so this is uh, I found because I was already you know uh, an experienced yogi so I found this quite interesting but on the other hand I didn't like the the way that he addressed the, the tone that he was like oh you don't know anything you are not worth you know it's like wait a minute these people live there these people do the pujas and whatever you know daily uh, these people eat sattvic food these people are you know in the mantras the whole day and you're telling them that they don't know you know how to wipe their mouth or something it's a little bit it was a little bit off-putting so to speak and then after that i realized that there was something going on in the ashram a lot of things were going on and of course it's a big scandal the guy is now um, out of uh, the country uh, you know avoiding criminal charges so very notorious i would say uh the next person i i knew about but because i i i knew the story of nityananda and i was like a little bit cautious but you know at first some some words sound interesting so you want to hear them let's see what this guy has to say so i kept uh, watching his videos and when i learned about his life i was like wait that doesn't make any sense it was Sadguru. Sadguru is the guy with the long beard he was um, a businessman or something so i i just didn't like the way that he preaches how to get enlightenment while he did not get enlightened in that way he did not reach the um uh, you know the samadhi in the way that that he sets his sort of technique to hmm? because we can say that uh, osho probably did do something like uh, a dynamic meditation before he reached the samadhi if he ever did i don't know we never know we, we have to just trust these people right how do we know that he's in samadhi maybe he's just sort of napping you know uh people people fall asleep uh, sitting up so we can call that samadhi you know i'm i'm super skeptical about those people so i don't know i'm not familiar with shri shri ravi shankar shivananda vivekananda or krishna murti uh, they are big names you might want to look into them if they ring a bell um, so let's move to the um, sort of more trustworthy uh, gurus now I want to say that uh, Paramahamsa Yogananda is a I think trustworthy person um, although my arguments for that would probably put him in the in the commercial category um, the there is there is one guy who has always been the same he's still alive and uh, he is so um, non-commercial 
that that's why he doesn't have a big following. But I think that uh, whatever he is saying has substance. Uh, he's not trying or pretending to be holy or um, you know above others. He's not um, putting down his followers. Um, and he's not trying to be super clever and super catchy. His name is Gurunat. Uh, he looks like a Santa Claus, but in white robes. Uh, he's uh, teaching Kriya Yoga. Um, he's, quite, uh, he's quite an interesting person, I think. Ah, there's also Ama, of course, the hugging uh, guru, the, the woman. She, I think she is, uh, she is very legitimate, but I, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. Uh, don't have any experience with uh, her sangha. So uh, one other guy that is interesting, which will lead me to the most legitimate and trustworthy guru, is uh, Muji Muji Baba. Now he is the only one that that doesn't really um, come from this Indian background. And um, he is from Jamaica, but he he went to India and uh, he followed Papa G. And uh, he claims to have got enlightenment uh, by following Papa G's teachings. And uh, Papa G was the devotee of Ramana Maharishi. So uh, uh, Muji has Ramana's picture behind him in his satsang. Uh, but uh, Muji is not directly connected to Ramana because Ramana had died when Muji actually came to India. Muji is one of these, uh, I think, non-commercial, although I think it's more because there is the need for him, so he answers the, the call. Um, but, um, I mean, a person has to live off something nowadays, and he doesn't live in Jamaica, he lives in Portugal. He travels to India every year. Um, of course, he has this... Um, non-profit organization i think i i I'm, I'm guessing and of course he organizes retreats that are not cheap not too pricey though but not cheap either um and i understand you know uh, he has people that he needs to pay and you know it's the western kind of mm, western uh version of the Indian ashram, so um, I'm not sure whether they need to pay taxes, whether they bought the, the land and they're paying the mortgage on it, I have no idea. Um, but uh, Whatever Muji is saying, he's always saying the same things. And he's not actually um, talking down on his followers. Uh, he does recognize when, a, when, a, when the devotee or a seeker is... Muji Baba uh, is from uh, Jamaica, but uh, he actually functions as if he is from India. Um, although he does not do the um, Hindu tradition, 
he does have some stories that come from um, Bhagavad Gita, um, but uh, but he's mostly into this um, non-religious sort of approach towards self-realization, and uh, this is where I'm gonna come to the end of my uh, guru expose um, and that's if you if you feel attracted to Muji Baba you might also feel attracted to from my perspective the real guru who actually is not a guru um, he did not accept and this is where most um, gurus actually differ from Ramana Maharishi is that most gurus accept the worship of their persona of their character of their existence but Ramana Maharishi did not accept that Ramana Maharishi did not uh, ask their followers to worship him to give him any money he did not produce anything yes they they probably did um, sell something in the ashram uh, but they mostly relied on donations they um, they begged for food and uh, Ramana always uh, sort of um, shied away from any kind of commercial commercialization of, uh, of his life, I would say. I think you, you can say that it's it's an indication or um, or some kind of a sign that the guru is real or not in how they approach this material life the material sphere of life how do they accept gifts do they ask for money for their courses um, I know that people in the West teach that oh it's all energy exchange and money is energy money is created by people like plastic like blankets and it's not necessary for existence if you look at animals they don't operate with money yet they exist so how is that possible because we have created a, a, the world that relies on this so Ramana Maharishi never wore lavish clothes he never dressed in anything but just a little cloth that he wore around himself in order not to expose his the intimate parts of his body to the world but only because most of the people consider it to be you know inappropriate so he did conform in a way just by by, by wearing some kind of white towel like cloth around his um, around his torso basically um, it's um I want to say that no matter no matter what the words are the words will sometimes make sense and the words of any guru be it fake or or real will make sense to certain people 
at a certain time, and that's why they succeed in, uh, in their work. Uh, because their words are not original. Their words are actually a rehash, a remix, um, a redo, a recycling of what's already known, of what is hidden in, in the books that might not be easily interpreted. So now, uh, you can say that these gurus are interpreters of um, some difficult language, um, but, and of course, you don't always have the time to, to learn this language yourself and to, to, to take time to interpret and to understand it correctly. And this is where uh, the problem comes, because if you don't want to take time to learn and deeply understand things, no matter what it is, you will never actually be able to profit from it. Somebody else will profit from it. You will always know it, sort of, you will be aware of it on a superficial level, but you will not really internalize it and experience it. You will just say, oh yeah, that sounds great. Oh, whatever uh, Tony Robbins is saying, yeah, sure, of course, because Tony Robbins probably read somebody else's uh, thesis. Well, I don't even think that. Uh, and, um, because uh, Bentinho Massaro uh, read some Osho or something, whatever, and now he's just uh, reinterpreting it in his own way because uh, Esther Hicks has this imagination, so she thinks that Know what the cats are doing. <laughs> it is possible that whatever they are saying is true. Not all of it, some of it pro probably is true. Some of it probably can be applied to your own life, to your own problems, to your own situations. But ask yourself whether this person is worth the time and the effort and the energy and especially the money does this person really have something that nobody else has um i uh, i heard recently of some other gurus the western ones and it's comical i love hearing about it because it's so comical that uh people earn money based on on somebody else's work on um, on saying things that, uh, that they did not invent uh, maybe they sort of just uh, re rephrased some things uh, which is fine they did not credit the the original let's say, the inspiration and the worst thing about it is that if the Guru A learned something from the Guru B and the Guru B charged $100 for this, Guru A is going to charge $1,000 for it. And this is where the problem comes. It's all about marketing. It's all about being able to earn a lot of money it's all about selling the lifestyle the lifestyle that you want because you think you want it the lifestyle that that, that they because you want it they take advantage of this wish and I would like to end on a positive note. I would like to end by recommending. Because I told you what not, sort of, I don't want to tell you what, who to listen to or who not to listen to. I just wanted to suggest some names. That would help you, that could help you 
start um, research and maybe gather more information and then decide whether there is something for you there or not. So on the positive note, as I say that I think that Ramana Maharishi was the only he wrote just one book and this book has maybe 15 30 pages you can read it in one sitting and when they asked him uh, if he was gonna write something else and he said why I said everything I had in that book whatever I would say more whichever book would follow would be probably the same thing and just maybe in a different way so why do I need to do that if you want you can read that book if that book is not enough for you <laughs> you can read it again but he just didn't see the commercial side of, of the whole uh, business and one person who is, I think, following the footsteps. I will correct myself in future, if that's not true. But from what I've seen from these uh, few years that I have been um, watching his videos, um, is that he, he is not the person who... Okay, I have to put out one video a week, you know, or every day, one video. Um, when he has something to say, when he is prepared, when he has the time, he does it. When people ask him, uh, he shares his opinions. Uh, this person is not a guru, uh, and this person is not um, not somebody who who I think earns money from whatever he is doing. Uh, connected to Ramana Maharishi. I think that uh, he is just helping the uh, Ramana Maharishi ashram and uh, helping spreading the words of uh, Ramana Maharishi and to, uh, for the people to understand them better. The context even of why Ramana said something or why he didn't say something, why Ramana did something or why he didn't do something. Uh, his name is David Godman and uh, he lives in India. He lives actually near the Ramana Maharishi Ashram in Tiruvannamalai. And, um, uh, but I think that recently he moved to Australia because he mentioned something like that in his videos. Um, what is important is that he actually met a lot of people who, who also met Ramana Maharishi. So he did not meet Ramana directly, but he, he heard a lot of stories, he gathered a lot of stories about Ramana from the people who used to live with him. So he is quite knowledgeable and uh, if uh, if you would like to learn more about Ramana's life, his videos are excellent and he really, his talks, uh, the, the way he describes things, it's just superb and um, inspirational. He's not trying to teach you anything, he's not trying to, to preach, he's not trying to gather any money. Uh, supporters followers but um, he's just doing it out of out of the, his own um, willingness and uh, and the need to do it so uh, David Godman's uh, YouTube channel will be linked down in the description I will not link any others because um, I'm just um, I don't want to advertise anything <laughs> I just want to express my opinion because um, um, 
I want to explain who and why I think about because I mentioned these were these names from time to time so uh, I just want to make it clear what I think about these people and uh, why I'm mentioning their names so uh, I'm almost done with this row the cats are outside and um, yeah Nice, huh? 